In this video, we will be discussing about change in bowel habit after rectal cancer treatment. Every patient who undergoes rectal cancer treatment has some bit of what is called as low anterior section syndrome or LARS. This is there because we have to modify and change the rectum. We are creating a new rectum by bringing the fresh intestine from above, fresh large bowel from above. This large intestine which we get from above has to learn the habit of storing the motion and passing it in correct time. That takes a lot of time. So during this period, every patient who undergoes a rectal cancer treatment has to go through a learning process. So what happens in this process? Most of the patients have a high frequency of stool. They will have to go to motion multiple times in a day. That is in the beginning. As it evolves, there is something called clustering. Clustering means they pass stools in a period of say one to two hours in multiple segments in very small quantities. So if they go once, they'll again get the urge to go again to motion within a few minutes. So this many people think is diarrhea. This is actually not diarrhea. The stools are well formed, but they have a high frequency of motion. So because of this, they think it is diarrhea. So they try to treat it like diarrhea, but actually it is part of what is called as low anterior section syndrome. Some of the patients may also have some bit of incontinence. Incontinence means they pass stools without being aware that the stools are coming. So there can be some amount of stool passage without awareness. Sometimes when they pass gas, they may end up passing some bit of stool. This thing also, as the patient learns to manage, this also improves. So initially, as soon as the surgery is done and as soon as the rectal functions are recovering, we generally tend to tell the patient to take some tablets which control motion like Imodium. This is the same medicine which is given during diarrhea. So that will allow the patient to tide over that crisis period. Now, as the patient learns or tries to learn how to cope up with this particular problem, we advise the patient to experiment with their food because food is one of the important factors which contributes to these symptoms. So we tell them that you experiment with foods. Some patients don't like to have or their intestine does not like to have some spicy food. Sometimes it is coffee, sometimes it is egg and many times it is milk products. So we tell the patient that you know you should do some experimentation with various food items and see what suits your intestine and what does not. So with time, generally, most of the patients settle down. Maximum symptoms happen immediately after the surgery is performed. But over time, say in about one and a half to two years, most of the patients would have normalized. There are many other things we will advise the patients to do in between based on what symptoms they have. And we have a scoring system for this also to see how severe are the symptoms. And accordingly, we make adjustments in the diet and various things to tell the patient as to what would work the best for them. So this surgery is a very coordinated effort. We require a dedicated patient and a dedicated surgical team in order to give you the best result. Thank you.